Andiamo live and we are live. So we are talking about an interesting paper. Paper title is Emerging Properties in Self-Supervised Vision Transformers. Interesting title. Um, Davide, so do you want to share a little bit more about what this is all about? Yeah. Um, we know that, that transformers are pretty uh, useful and efficient in natural language processing tasks, but now they are merging new new applications on computer vision. Uh -huh. This is one of the latest papers about the transformers applied for computer vision. Uh, basically, uh, they train the vision transformer with all these uh, self-supervised learning tasks. Okay. And they created, uh, yeah, they pre-trained the transformer and they created the representation, representations of, of the images, as you can see here. Um, the, can you zoom in? If you, yeah. I'm not sure if you, yeah. Okay. So, Valerio, you have clear... No, I have, um, I have a question. What do you mean with by self-supervised? Yeah, a lot. Uh, so, usually self-supervised means that um, you create a self-supervised task to train your model. Uh, for example, in the autoencoder uh, network, you try to... Uh, through re reconstructing the, the input image. Oh, okay. Okay, but uh, you try obviously to reduce the dimensionality of the image in the in the encoder, in the encoding, no? Okay. Ah, I know Hervé Gégou, by the way. I know, and I also know Julien Meral. They were, they're French. Julien Meral yeah. was part of Inria Grenoble, and Hervé Gégou was Inria Rennes. They're, yeah, very, very, very good. So they, they usually the self-supervised uh, learning uh, um, task in, in, uh, in computer vision is like uh, the, the Siamese network that I, uh, I used uh, a while ago, sometimes ago. Uh, so you, uh, you crop the same image in different ways. Uh -huh. and you have to recognize that these different crops of the same image belongs to the same uh, input global image, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, here the, tra the, the self-supervised learning task is slightly different. Uh, they don't use this contrastive learning technique. They use a different technique. But yeah, the, the basic uh, uh, innovation here is that they're using a, a transform architecture instead of a simple convol convolutional neural network. And they show that the transformer architecture is uh, able to uh, have a really semantic aware representation of the image. So, for example, if we go, yeah, find this. So basically, uh, sorry, can you go up? Yeah. So basically, they not only are uh, the, the initial image. Wait. Yeah. So they, for example, the first image. So they not only are predicting that um, it is a bird, but uh, you know, they also highlight the the part of the image that is more discriminant for uh, predicting that label. Yeah. Uh, you, you can see here. Uh, on the left there is the input image, and on the right, on the right there is the the self attention layer of the transformer architecture. This is not the output of the model; it's just ah, the ah, okay. self attention layer. The model doesn't know what is a bird, what is a boat, what is a bicycle. Okay, it understands <laughs> only that the bird is a, the the discriminative object in that image. Okay, ah, okay, 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 okay. So these this is very similar to a segmentation here, but there are, uh, the model is not trained on, on the masks of the segmentation. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, on another page there was a, a comparison between um, the a simple ResNet architecture and the, and the transformer architecture on these uh, images. Uh, for example, yeah, here they uh, they compare the like uh, the, the transformer architecture trained uh, only on uh, self supervised learning task and on the supervised task. And you can see that. With the self-supervised learning for training, the the model is very more focused on, on the central object. So the, there is not so much noise as in the as in the supervised learning. Sorry, in the supervised supervised. It means that you have the label. For example, this uh, yeah, the, this uh, system is trained on ImageNet. Okay. Okay. So, in the self-supervised learning. Uh, the model never see the never see the, the labels. Okay. But it, uh, it understand that the to in order to recognize the different crops of the same image, you understand that the, the discriminative, uh, yeah, the discriminative pattern in the image is the bird. And the supervised means that. I mean, you're talking about ResNet. No, here yeah, I'm talking about transformers. So they're uh, both transformers. Yeah. One there was super... another picture. Yeah, in the in the comparison, the, the, there are where the, the, there are both transformers. One uh, trained uh, supervisedly, and the other with no labels. We go in the appendix. So in this case, supervised means that it is a ResNet trained to recognize the label. Okay. Instead, in the Dean architecture, the architecture of this paper, the the, the network never sees the, the labels. And you can see that here, the, the attention is uh, totally focused on, it's very, I don't know, it's very focused on, on the object. You see that in in the in the supervised model, there is a lot of noise. But so basically, in on on these these um, binary images are not the output of the models. They are some intermediate uh, yeah. layers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and in the in, in the of course in the case of supervised uh, learning is, is the traditional case of, but uh, if in the case of uh, the dino if the, these are some the output of some intermediate filters uh, how the model is trained to recognize some classes in this case the ImageNet classes yeah here yeah, the model is trained only in uh, is only a self supervised learning fashion so uh, the output of the dino model is just a an embedding representation of the image okay ah, ah, and ah. when it, once you have that representation you train uh, a multilayer perception to ah, ah, okay, 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 okay. Can you just repeat this because I want to take? I'm taking some notes and I want to have it have it clear for the audience. Yeah. So let's go back. Repeat this, no, no, no. please. So, 
this mod is, is, is used only to create a context aware presentation of the image. This is the output. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the image goes through these uh, self attention layers. Okay. And so, these so layers. We have, we have this input image. Yeah. That goes through attention layers. Yeah. Uh, attentions I, compare uh, the different pixel and understand. And yeah, the self attention layer basically um, switch on the um, the interaction, the most interesting interaction, and switch off the the less interesting. For example, in this image of the plane, we understand that the the most interesting pixel are the ones related to the plane, to the profile of the plane. And the the background is totally switched off. Okay, and uh, the, uh, you said that the, after the self-attention layers, there is a, a, a CNN trained, what is it? Uh, yeah, for the self-supervised learning task, they just put uh, one more layer after uh, the, the last self-attention layer, and then they put a softmax uh, activation function to recognize if the two patches of the same image, uh, if the two patches uh, belong uh, belong to the same image or not okay but you you could plug in a, a different uh, a, a different uh, a different um, um, layer trained for a different task and, uh... so so basically the, the main um, purpose of this uh, dying architecture is to create some embeddings yeah. that are very, very, very discriminative. Um, and then use the use, use uh, these embeddings to train um, whatever classifier you want. Yeah, you see here, they, they have some, uh, this is the embedding representation of some images. And for example, you see that these rotisserie, butch, butcher shop, grocery store, uh, all very, uh, very all together. Okay. Mm. Wow, that's pretty cool. And that's totally unsupervised. And, 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 and um, do you did you already use some some archi like some architecture like this? Is easy to implement? Um... Uh, well, I, I used a similar architecture that is Bert for the natural language processing. You. It's, it's very yeah. common in a in a natural language processing scenario to use the birth model to have a representation of a sentence and then you train this output representation on your downstream task this is basically the same uh, approach but for a computer vision problem so it's the same approach of the classical BERT approach yeah yeah awesome Okay, great. Any other um, final remarks uh, about this uh, paper? Any other um, questions? Uh, can I? Uh, can I? Yeah. Um, in this paper, is there the final result of the classification? Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, it, it is one of the most interesting things in this paper because if you read the abstracts. They say that they trained a simple k nearest neighbor on the output uh, embeddings, and they get a seventy-eight percent accuracy on ImageNet, only with uh, a k nearest neighbor on the output. Embedding. So these are the f these features are like super discriminative. Very, yeah, very discriminative. A top one, eh? it's top one. Mm -hmm. eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So, well, um, have we got anything else to say about this paper? Where can, where, you know, do you see any applications on our work? 
uh, without mentioning any clients, any, any confidential data? Uh, yeah, this could be an interesting alternative to the, to the usual. We, we usually use the pre-train on ImageNet for our models. Yeah. It could be yeah, a valid alternative, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's pretty uh, hard to, to train a model like this from scratch, but we could use yeah, the, 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 the parameters that they, they trained. To, yeah. yeah. Like... Uh, so the, uh, the code is online? Is, uh... Uh, I think so. And um, is it possible to fine tune this kind of um, this kind of network? Yeah, it's possible because the code is totally uh, open source. But I don't know uh, how much is um, how much computational power do you need for for this? So you are saying that maybe the network, the network is very huge. Yeah, the network, the network I think is pretty huge. Uh, let's see. Okay. So let's see. There is, no, there is not. Uh, uh, oh yeah. yeah. There is a the Excellent. So we're gonna put all this online, right? We're gonna post. Uh, we're gonna post on. Uh, online uh, this video with this review um, maybe even uh, the top line description of the paper and we're going to play with the models with the pre-trained models that's pretty cool yeah doesn't seem so huge i mean 21 mega uh, 21 million parameters ah no yeah but not so huge as gpt3 or other transformer models i think that you could for sure, use uh, use it uh, for uh, for inference, and then you train the output embedding. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm very, I'm very excited. And the, the result, uh, the results impressed me really, really. Yeah, because it seems a segmentation model, but it's not just a, a function. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, this concludes our first uh, uh, review of uh, an interesting uh, computer vision machine learning paper. Next week, another one. Thanks to David for bringing us, bringing this to our attention. Thank you very much.